I think the thing I have learned as I've gotten older is that you have to play the hand you're dealt. You can't always control the circumstances around you. Certainly in a leadership position, you can't always decide what challenges you're gonna face. And you can either spend time bemoaning that fact and wishing it were different, or you can roll up your arms and deal with it. And, and you know, I'm an old bridge player, and, and one thing I learned from playing bridge is that sometimes you can have the most impact when you do well with a really crummy hand. When I was very young, I always wanted to play school and I always wanted to be the teacher. So maybe it's not totally surprising that I ended up in higher education. Um, but in fact, by the time I got to college, I thought I'll be a mathematician or a scientist, maybe a chemist or a physicist. And uh, then I took an anthropology course and I loved it. And I went into the professor and I said, I'd like to do a dual major in math and anthropology. And he talked to me for a while and then he said, okay, I know what you should do, you should study linguistics. It's very formal, like a mathematician, but language is so human. And that's what I did, I studied linguistics. That led me into natural language processing, which is a branch of computer science. I tell you that story for two reasons. One is, I think, because it illustrates the somewhat nonlinear path of mine and I think a lot of women's careers. And the other is just to talk about the power of mentorship, because that professor, who helped me find my linguistics degree, and who then, by the way, helped me do a special major in linguistics because this university didn't have linguistics, he changed my life, and I think mentors matter. You listen to them, you talk to them, you meet with them, you try to put yourself in their position, you try to think about what motivates them. What can Most people, I think, want to make the organizations that they work for better, but they want to do it in ways that fit with their interests and their strengths. So I think you just have to spend a lot of time listening to people and helping them move to ways in which they can be the most productive. Well, I got into artificial intelligence because I was interested in people, and I was interested in how people think and how people speak, and I thought we could learn a lot from trying to teach computers to think, in quotes, and to speak. And I think we did learn a lot from that. Um, artificial intelligence has shifted over time. There's much less of a focus, at least today, in trying to mimic what people do, and more of a focus on trying to make computers more helpful to people, have them do their jobs better, have them live their lives in, in, in more fun ways. Um, it's a very important discipline. There are lots of great things that have come out of it. There's also some challenges that I think it's going to pose for society, and, and we need to look carefully into those.